All right, hello everyone, and peace of Christ all of you. Please invite your friends and let us have some good time together. I hope my voice is giving good. Please let me know if you have any problem or difficulty because sometimes shaitan he piss in your ears, as Prophet Muhammad, who always tell the truth, he said. You know, <clears throat> Prophet Muhammad he prophesied a lot of things. Shaitan play with your anus, shaitan piss in your ears, shaitan round himself around your penis all those things are invisible for us but Prophet Muhammad because he's a special prophet he have a very specialty about penis anus all things end with s so this is why even the biggest organization for Islam is called ISIS take a note <clears throat> so you know from time to time we have uh, uh, David Wood and the uh, apostate prophet they provide us with some entertainment uh, and they invited someone he is a scholar and you know if you are a scholar that that's it you are a scholar I mean you earn the title <clears throat> so I was looking at uh, at this uh, channel here uh, apostate prophet and actually let me <clears throat> let me pause the link underneath of the video in case any of you did not see it yet <coughs> oh, let us see here we will add it in the info all right so now we have it in the info <coughs> so uh, Apostate Prophet and uh, David Wood, they invited someone, his name is Sheikh Farooz. I don't know what the heck does that mean. I mean, how, what does this name mean? Maybe if one day we get a chance to talk to this guy, we can ask him, what Farooz mean? <clears throat> is that an Arabic name? I don't know. You know, I, I me myself, I never heard of it. Farouz. Anyway, <clears throat> uh, you know, and you will notice that uh, those Western people, when they convert to Islam, they act weird. And obviously, you, you have to be a weirdo to convert to such a stupid religion. So he wear a hat and, you know, like suppose he's a Muslim now, so he have to <clears throat> have a certain uh, uniform. <clears throat> so we wouldn't want to waste our time and your time. Farouz, you know, in the in the thumb of the video, I have a different. Uh, it, the word is different. It's not Farouz. <clears throat> anyway, Farouz, Farouz, virus. Who care? So here we have introduction, and uh, we will make comment about this. And if there is anyone knows this guy, he would like to join us <clears throat> anytime. I would be happy to have him. And I'm not making fun of him. Or being a stupid, I'm just saying he is stupid. There's a huge difference between making fun of somebody or saying making a state of reality. So let us see how this debate work, and we will make comment. Yeah, today we are here because we want to talk about uh, some very interesting things that I have talked about before on this channel. What an introduction! Uh, <laughs> So uh, today we wanted to, we want to discuss or debate a uh, a topic that I brought up in the past, um, which is a topic related to uh, Muhammad's uh, prophecies about the coming of the hour, and we will get into that in a in a minute. Uh, but first off, I want to say uh, thank you to uh, for joining and welcome to. Uh, two gentlemen, both of whom nobody has ever seen on here, uh, David Wood and the Farouz. Hi, guys. Thank you for having me. Hello. Uh, do you want to quickly introduce yourself for those who are not aware? I mean, I, I, I basically, um, I called you an Islamic scholar, since you call yourself uh, Sheikh Farouz, and also... Um, you will notice here that anyone in the world he called himself Sheikh, uh, because this is a very shaky religion. That's it. This guy he's a Sheikh. He cannot even read the Quran, 
the same as the the ketchup boy Sheikh Uthman. Uh, anyone is Sheikh, you know. Sheikh Joe Biden, as an example. <laughs> so he's Sheikh. He called himself Sheikh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, no comment. Let us continue. <clears throat> oh boy. Somebody who was coming here to challenge and confront us about our challenge. But what is your background? Okay. What, do you, what do you do? Um, so, you know, oh, for, I wouldn't take the um, term scholar, but I appreciate the uh, compliment. He will not take the term scholar, but he will take the term shake. <laughs> Very humble. <laughs> uh, so the fruits is. Let me introduce myself. I'm the Pope, just in case you don't know, you know. But I'm undercover these days, you know, just to let you know. Pseudonym I use, I, you know, I have a kind of a part time YouTube channel. Like I post every once in a while. Um, so I guess a little bit about my background. Yes, what I do. So um, I guess I'll go to my, both my secular and religious background. Um, my secular background, I have a bachelor's in history, a master's in physics, and then multiple advanced degrees in uh, educational leadership. Uh, Islam. Multiple advanced degrees in leadership. That's it. He can be a manager in a grocery store. I mean, you have a master's degree in physics, a bachelor's degree in arts. How you jump from art to physics? Eh, no more problem. But what does it have to do with you being a sheikh? So if I have a bachelor degree in potato chips, uh, does that make me a shake? What is, I mean, what is your education about the topic you are debating about? You have a, what? Okay. Continue. Ironically, I went through the uh, traditional Ijazis system in the late 90s, uh, early 2000s. And I had my concentration was on um, Islamic jurisprudential uh, methodology. Mm -hmm. So that focuses on like what um, sources are laws derived from, uh, what are the methodologies that derive these sources. Um, the, you look at the different legal conclusions and comparative laws, um, the differences between the 10 modes and 20 transmissions of the Quran and their legal um, applications. Uh, the probabilities of hadith reliability. You will notice that all those things he is reading, <clears throat> you know. Do you see what he's doing? Even talking about himself, he have to read. I mean, the guy, he just asked you, introduce yourself. And now he is reading about himself. Okay. This is a good start and their applicability, um, historical trends and disagreements, exegetical methods, and just juristic conclusions and our reasonings. And 30 seconds, the reason I got in that, into that topic um, was my experience when I converted to Islam. Uh. When I converted to Islam, there were a lot of mosques around me, and each mosque had a different interpretation of Islam. <laughs> <laughs> you know you remind me of a chicken she came from the little chick came from the egg and he saw the duck he called her mommy she said i'm not your mommy then he saw the cat he called her mommy she's just stupid i'm a cat do i look like your mommy then he saw a fox and the fox, he told him, listen, go and bring your friends and we have a lot of mommies waiting for you. <laughs> so he have, he saw that there's too many mosques around him and each one of them have different interpretation for Islam. That is a clear evidence that Islam is really clear. And now <clears throat> he will read for us the answer Based on which interpretation? <laughs> read more, read. And each one felt that theirs was right. So I wanted to know where these differences came from. Uh huh. And I wanted to understand, okay, why do you think this? 
Where did it come from? What is the history behind it? Mm. Um, so this way I could better understand um, people. Well, that's that's a good summary. So um, you have been engaged in uh, defending Islam or preaching about Islam for a while on YouTube, uh, right? Did, uh, also outside of that, did, do you have any, um, do you have experience in generally trying to, you know, prove Islam true or disprove detractors? Um, I would say a little bit of, um, part of me wants to say neither. So what I, um, so like, for example, it, uh, I, I listened to, um, and argue like a back and forth one time that you, David, and Sajid Lipum um, <laughs> had, and I critiqued it. So when I dis, I didn't say, you know, this person's right, this person's wrong, 100%. Like, so if I disagreed with you, I stated, this is the point I disagree with you on why. If I disagree with Sajid, I say, this is the point I disagreed on Sajid with why. Uh, this is an honest Muslim. Just take a note, please. He's, he's not like the rest of the all Muslims. He is an honest one. <laughs> if I disagree with David, this is the point I disagree with David on and why. I try to avoid, um, I try to avoid like, uh, you know, so I'm more into like just looking at the facts. And there are certain topics that I... Um, yeah, brother, it's a fact. I mean, the Quran says we will have a lot of boys in the heaven. And it's a fact, you know. I mean, all of us would like to have boys. You know, 80,000 servants, it's a fact. And the sun set in murky water, those are facts. And, you know, we can give an interpretation to fix the fact. And, uh, yeah, <clears throat> go ahead. Uh, he is a guy who checked the facts, and this is why he became a Muslim. Um, you know, try to, like, avoid, and then there are certain I embrace. It's like, for example, like when topics I try to avoid. Like when you, I saw a debate between you and other uh, Muslims on um, Abraham, for example. I don't get involved, like Abraham in the, in the Kaaba. I don't get involved with stuff like that. And here's my reasoning. Um, Abraham is an ahistorical figure. And before people out there, you know, throw me out of religion, whatever religion it may be, by ahistorical figure, I'm not saying that he never existed. What I'm saying is, is there is no source evidence of his existence outside of religious texts, right? So Abraham exists in the Christian Bible. He exists in the Muslim Quran. He exists in the Muslim Hadith. He exists in Talmud, apocryphal scriptures, but all the references to him are in scripture. So, I mean, here you see the stupidity. So this guy, he didn't want to debate about uh, Abraham because it exists only in those books. But can we find any book about Muhammad except religious books? Have we ever heard of the name of Muhammad in any historian book? What this guy is talking about? Have you ever heard of a prophet, his name is Saleh, in the history books? No. I mean, don't, it, you, you see sometimes men, they are grown men, but they are they have a brain of a child. So he don't engage in such an argument because there's no proof, you know, like he want to say there's no proof or disapprove. But what he will say to us now, who try to prove something to us, is based in only religious books. So if you refuse to go in an argument base which because it's based only this is information written only in religious books well why you are there hmm. i don't know what your mom she was giving you as milk when you were a child i don't like to get involved in those type of arguments but if it's if it's something fact based, word based, ah. um, etc., I I'll get involved in things more like that. Fact based, um, base. Okay, that that clears it. Um, uh, the, my other guest here, the Dizzle. Do you also want to briefly introduce yourself for those who are not aware uh, who in the world you are? This uh, is the guy who ate the Quran because he was hungry. What introduce yourself? Okay. Um. No, nah, people know who I am. <laughs> uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, 
David Wood uh, grew up as an atheist, eventually became a Christian, got interested in Islam, uh, mainly because I had a couple, uh, I had a couple Muslim friends who were trying to share Islam with me. So ended up studying Islam a bit um, just because my friends were Muslims and uh, eventually decided to get into this uh, a bit more for for multiple reasons but uh, among them are the fact that some of my uh, friends are ex-muslims and now they're under a death sentence and i've always felt like i'd be kind of a uh, i'd be kind of a terrible friend if i just didn't say anything about the the ideology that calls for their beheading um you're in this category ap because because we're friends mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Right, that's that's more than enough. Thank you. Uh, as for who I am, I'm some guy who makes YouTube videos. All right. So uh, we want to today talk about a a topic that I have addressed uh, quite a bit in the past um, with a certain video that I made uh, in dedication to this topic called Muhammad's failed prophecies, and I brought up a a problem in um, in the, in Islamic tradition that. Uh, that, that Muhammad prophesied that the end would come very soon. I specifically brought up um, two narrations according to which he said that the end would come within 100 years. And another prophecy according to which he said that the end or the, the hour when he was asked when the hour would come, he said the hour would uh, come before this boy in his presence grows very old. So um, the implication here, or the, the, the idea here, is that Muhammad basically um, told his believers, his followers, that the hour would come within their lifetime or quite soon, at least within the next 100 years. So it was rather an apocalyptic um, religion um, intending to prepare for an imminent end of the world, but that end of the world never happened. And therefore, I concluded that Islam is false. We will, uh, of course, get into the details of what this idea is based on, the specific narrations, the specific traditions, the specific uh, quotations and all their details. But this is uh, pretty much the summary uh, of the topic. And I said before that um i have not seen any muslim scholar or apologist uh successfully debunk this idea and prove to us that muhammad was not indeed uh wrong that muhammad was not a false prophet uh Farouz said that he can deal with this topic and that he, that he can prove us wrong and he can show that muhammad did not make a false prophecy that this is simply our misunderstanding and i think I think he also said in his in his video that I saw that um, if he is proven wrong and if we indeed prove that Muhammad made a false prophecy, he would actually leave Islam or something like that. As if, if I don't remember uh, it wrong, is this David? Is this pretty much it? Is there anything you want to add? Um, no. So people. So uh, yeah, we just wanted people to have the idea of what uh, Sheikh Farouz is responding to. So there are hadiths as you pointed out where muhammad sounds like muhammad is saying the world is going to end the end the final hour is going to come uh there's there's a there's the one within a hundred years and then there's the ones where he's pointing to a, a young boy and saying hey you know uh if this kid lives he doesn't die from sickness or something then uh the end would come and so um sheikh farouz said that he could give a presentation uh responding to this and so uh, guys, we, 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 we told him we give him un, uninterrupted presentation time. So don't expect us to like be interrupting him and presentation. Hey guys, we are going to give him an, an interrupted the presentation time. You know, this is why those, uh, debate, I find them very weird and very stupid because the guy, he will start reading a slide. Even they will put his, he, he gave them his answer before he started the debate. I mean, have you ever heard of a debate like this? He gave them a slide to put it on the screen. He, he have a presentation. <laughs> I'm serious. <yeah. laughs> 
<laughs> a presentation, the, a debate. This is a debate. <laughs> you know, I like to play cards uh, with you, and I'm going to give you my cards. Okay, put them in the screen. I mean, what the heck is that? How this is a debate, and those people they have a presentation. Okay, go ahead. And questioning everything he says, we're just gonna we're gonna we're gonna let him lay out his case because sometimes on an issue like this, it you, you need to lay out your case. You need to lay out your understanding sure, sure. of how you're interpreting things. Yeah. And so uh, we're gonna give him we're gonna give him time time to do that. No problem there. Yeah. No, we will definitely listen to the the, the presentation, uh, listen to the argument, and then uh, only afterwards we will begin engaging with it and responding to it, looking at the evidence. And yeah. All right. Oh. Is is are we ready then? I think, I think we're set. Yes, I'm ready. He's yeah, very okay. ready. It's a presentation. What's ready? Look at this. <laughs> so the claim uh, that I'm evaluating, um, the statement was the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, predicted that the day of judgment would occur within 100 years of 632 of the common era, 732 CE. So the premise, the world did not end. Uh, I worded the conclusion a little differently than um, our host. Uh, that Muhammad inaccurately predicted the date the world would end. Um, so to test the claim, the hypothesis is the Prophet Muhammad predict, peace be upon him, predicted the world would end within 100 peace years be upon death. Him. So I felt if that claim was true, that there are testable predictions, things we should accept to see, that all the variants of the Hadith would support that meaning. Um, they wouldn't be conflicting. Uh, there would be no conflicting text from the Quran, there will be no conflicting texts from a more authoritative hadith. No other prophecies of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So uh, let us let us uh, uh, let us put the fertilizer. You know, shit is a fertilizer. So let us put the shit in the table. Sorry for the word. So now he will play that because we are Muslims and because we say things oppose each other, therefore what we say cannot be taken as serious have you ever heard of a stupid answer like this the whole presentation is just to say i'm just giving you the summary well we have this hadith says that that hadith says the opposite and the other hadith says the opposite and that hadith and it's going to take the quran so everybody contradict everybody and now this is the solution the solution is as long as they contradict each other it's false <laughs> <laughs> but the question is how you stupid Muhammadans have all those things contradicting each other and you put it in books it's called authentic yet it's contradicting each other I mean how authentic can contradict authentic unless it's really contradicting each other and Muhammad is a stupid fool this guy he forgot what he said yesterday as an example you know Muhammad is that kind uh, he forget everything the Quran he forgot even the name of his wife like what's your name yeah all right so Muhammad is a person he who will know that he forget everything this is why he says I received the Quran in seven letters have you ever heard of a God I mean okay Allah supposedly is the same God of Moses according to Muhammad and why Allah did not give Musa seven Torah why he did not give Jesus seven uh, Gospels? Hmm? Why he did not give Abraham uh, seven uh, Suhaf as the Quran called it? Oh. If, if only Muhammad he gets seven, we need to ask why. Isn't it, this is contradiction to the Quran? The Quran says I made it in the clear Arabic. So which one of the versions is a clean Arabic if the first one is a clear then we do not need the second one and the third one and the fourth one and the fifth one and the sixth one but because Muhammad do not remember what he said yesterday and they got him busted hey prophet this is what not you said yesterday he said that this is second Quran okay this is <laughs> Allah give it to me in seven ways <laughs> it's like a guy he is making a recipe of hummus and hummus is very simple food you know I mean there is no recipe what recipe <laughs> so you make hummus today differently from tomorrow 
but a prophet, you said yesterday different, you know. Oh, the, this is a different hummus, okay? The prophet or uh, a prophet of Allah, and Allah is to be the hummus in different seven ways. <laughs> and Muhammad he stuck with certain numbers, like seven ways. And you know, and the Muslim, by the way, understand not only one way. So if Muhammad himself would need seven ways in order to understand the Quran, so why you Muslim you have one Quran? What happened to the seven eleven? ways oh, past the 100 year mark and the hadith to have no possible meaning within the rules of the language at the time it was spoken Oof. the guy don't even speak one arabic word except alhamdulillah and now he is speaking about the meaning in the language just wait until i get you busted with the language um, so my approach is I'm going to discuss multiple versions of the Hadith. Should we listen to him? I mean, we can read the presentation. We have all the answers right there. You know? <laughs> First, I will put multiple versions of the Hadith. <laughs> hey, Abdul, first of all, why you have a multiple version of the Hadith? What's wrong with you? Same hadith has multiple versions. Tell us, tell us about the multiple version. Next to other hadith and Quranic ayat in the same topic, mm -hmm. I'm going to apply uh, jurisprudential um, method methodological That's principles. Um, and I'm going to discuss a little bit um, if there's anything that any prophecy that came true after 732 of the Common Era. Then I will analyze how Imam Muslim understand the hadith. Ah. Um, so, how Imam Muslim understand the hadith? One guy he never saw Muhammad, never witnessed Muhammad. He have nothing to do with Muhammad. How he <laughs> you donkey. Uh, Imam Muslim came long after Muhammad, so now obviously this prophecy is a lie. So they tried to fix it. Uh, what I will say, I, I'm a Muslim, and Muhammad he says the child will not grow old before the judgment day come. And then those people they came hundred of years after. So what they will say now? They will say, Oh, Muhammad is born and was farting. They will try to duct tape. So we have to try now to find different understanding. But the text in Arabic is so clear, and there is no different versions of the hadith. That's a lie. It has got you busted. Continue, continue. The hadith versions. So there are multiple versions of this hadith. Um, Aisha reported some men among the bed. Hold on, let me zoom in. Multiple version. I'm going to take a screenshot, I think better. I love virgins, man. Even my oil is virgin oil. Multiple version of the hadith. So this is his translation. Let us uh, make it big so we can read it. Uh, and look, I mean, this guy is supposed to be professional, but he don't even put the hadith number. What is the hadith number? What the heck? Some man, some men among the Bedouin came to the prophet. Peace and the blessing upon him. Don't you see this is stupid translation? There's no such a thing in the hadith says peace and blessing upon him. Liars. Anyway, so he said, by your hour, the prophet meant their death. I mean, do you see the stupidity? Isn't it the Quran says, this guy, he will tell you later, that the Quran says that only Allah knows the time. Allah knows when you live. Allah knows when you die. Only Allah even know what is inside the womb. So do, do Muhammad knew when people would die? And did those people, all of them, they die? All of them? Do Muhammad even knew when he would die? He said their hour. That is a false translation. Let us go to the tafsir, uh, sorry, for the, the hadith and see it together. Uh, 
So this idiot, he do not speak Arabic and he is reading the Muslim lying translation. And we will show whatever is in English translation shown. A young boy of uh, of a, a Morira, let us see this first one here, passed by the Holy Prophet. He's a holy, hmm. holy, and he was of my age. Thereupon, Allah Apostle said, if he live long, he would not grow old till the last hour would come. Oh, you're the Muslims, they add between two bracket to the old people of his generation. What? Where he say that? If we go and see the hadith in Arabic, just to show you. I remember this is Al Bukhari, we have the number. So we will show the exact hadith in Al Bukhari and we will try to find it in full. All right, this is which one? And here it says, oh, this is Sahih Muslim, sorry. Not Al-Bukhari, let us go to Muslim. All right. All right, I guess we found the hadith, here we go. Just to show you how they lie and why they we cannot trust what Muslims say. You see, the Muslims, they cut the hadith in Arabic. Read carefully. The hadith in Arabic here doesn't say anything of what it says in the full hadith. They only posted this. This is the only text shows in Arabic. The rest is just from, 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 from he was walking by. That's it. But the hadith here, which I will show you, this is the same exact number. And this is the hadith. And let me give you a link. I hope the link is able to open. So here you will find this is the exact same hadith 2952 from Sahih Muslim, authentic Muslim. If we take this and we translate this page into English. Before we do that, it says, the Bedouin, they came to the Prophet and they ask him about the hour, not their hour. What their hour? I mean, all of us, we would die in one day. <laughs> what the heck is that? And you know, the funny is, it says Bedouins, not one, not two, there's many. When the hour? When is the hour? So he look for the youngest one between them he says if this person live he will not get old in arabic when you say the word haram uh, you speak about someone in his 30 and over and here it says then and your hours will come so he is saying now he's saying their hour no this says, when the hour. So the hour, which the judgment day, the second you go in the hadith and you type the word asa, asa have one meaning, the hour. Same time here, when the Muhammadan he tried to say, Muhammad is prophesying when all of them, they will die. I thought nobody knows when any human being will die save Allah. Any Muslim disagree?
Any Muslim in the chat disagree? So this guy, he said, he will not accept anything if it's contradicting the Quran. Do we have any Muhammadan? Hmm? I don't see any Muhammadan. If you go in the Quran, just to show you how stupid this guy and his argument, how before even he start with destroy it. Let us go to the stupid Quran. <coughs> this is the yellow pages of Muhammad. Introduction. This is the book of fairy tales and stupidity. Read it. The same chapter he actually, in his presentation, he quote for us, it says, no one knows when a soul, a person will die. No one. Muhammad is the same. Only Allah, alone. Read carefully. Verily, the knowledge of the hour with Allah alone. It is He who sent down rain. Yeah, exactly. And He who knows what is in the womb. Uh, yeah, you know, and plus the machines and x ray and etc. Nor anyone knows what it's He will earn in morrow. Nor does anyone know what land. He is to die. Verily, Allah is all knowledgeable. So nobody knows. So how Muhammad he can tell them, you know, the when or before this guy get older, your hour is coming, and they mean and and the Muslim they claim he meant their hour as their death time. And remember, in the hadith, they did not ask him when our hour. They said, when the hour will come. Read it. Uh, actually, I cannot read it for you here in English. They cut it off. Do you see the liars? Let us go. We have to go now to the Arabic version of it. So I will use Google Translation in front of your eyes so you can see how the Muhammad and they cut it off in purpose. Did you ask yourself why really they took it off? Why did they not put the whole text in Arabic? Because if you put the whole Arabic text, then the lie is exposed. Let us use Google Translation. Remember, this is Hadith 2952. You see it? 2952. And what is the number here? This is Hadith 2 number 53. Oh, let us see exactly 253. Here we go. 253 is the same. <laughs> it's the one after it. So 2953, Sahih Muslim. 2953, Sahih Muslim. Wonderful. Let us translate. We go down to 2953. A man asked the Messenger of Allah, Allah pray on him and salute him. When the hour will come, do you see, did he say when my hour will come? Did he say that? If somebody came to me and he says, when the hour will come, and all uh, everybody who speak Arabic knows that the word, when you say the hour, you speak about the judgment day. This is how it's mentioned in the Quran. This is how it's mentioned in the Hadith. The hour is not about anything else except the day of judgment and he has a boy from Ansar who is is called Muhammad and the message of Allah may Allah pray on him and salute him said if this boy lives perhaps old in age will not overtake him will not translation is not accurate he will not grow old 
until the hour is established, not your hours. Do you see? If you go here, what they say? The old generation. What old? There is no such a thing. The question is so clear. The guy, he asked him when the hour will happen. Not my hour. And the height before it is 2953. Same. Bedouins, not one. The Bedouins came to the messenger. And they asked him about the hour. When that hour will be. Remember, Muhammad, he confirmed only Allah knows when people die. And where they will die. Muhammad, he know nothing about the unseen. And this is a question happened in the moment. Like now. It's not like Muhammad, he go and Jibreel come to him and squeeze him. And no my is three times. No, this is he asked the question. He gave him the answer. And then he says, and then before this child will get old, the hour would come. And you can see all the hadith. This is a Sahih al-Bukhari. This is Sahih Muslim too, actually. All right? The same. The hour. The same. Until the hour is established. This is al-Bukhari. Hadith number, page number 6167. Do you see it? So what was the question? When the hour, so this uh, uh, funny, silly boy who think he have an answer preparing presentation, he fool himself by, by reading the translation. But did you try to take the hadith in Arabic, read the whole hadith in Arabic? You do not know Arabic, no problem. Use Google translation, you idiot. Is it a shame that you are a person who claim to be a sheikh? But you don't want to study Arabic so you can read and nobody lie to you? And then the idiot, he said that this is the hadith contra the Quran. Because the Quran says, nobody knows uh, the hour except Allah. Well, you stupid idiot. Everything in Islam, Muhammad, he say is contradicting the Quran. I mean, what those, what's wrong with those people? Those people do not know. This guy, he is a growing man. He do not know that everything Muhammad contradicts the Quran. As an example, how many prayer in the Quran? Three. How many prayer Muhammad, he said? Five. Which one you take? You take the five. You see the liars? They say, if something contradicts the Quran, we don't take it. The Quran say three. The two end of the day, Read it. <laughs> so the Muhammadan, in order to save their ass from from the stupidity of Muhammad, they, they come to a solution. If something can read the Quran, we will not take it. But you are a bunch of hypocrite liars because you take everything Muhammad say, including what can read the Quran, like the muta. Like the prayer, everything Muhammad said. Here we go. The Quran says you pray in certain time in the day. Which the which time? And perform the prayer in the two ends of the day. And night of the night. Look at the stupid translator. And the night of the night. I mean, I want to know what software this guy is using. Listen carefully. I'm a translator. Perform prayer at the do end of the day and night of the night. Night of the night. A night night of the night. <laughs> it has changed. But anyway, this is still a three time. <laughs> Let us see a different translator. Let us see another donkey. Hilari Ankhan. Okay, Hilari Ankhan. 
<laughs> I'm lucky with donkeys. And perform salat. And by the way, salat does not mean prayer, brother. Brother, it means blessing, blessing. So Allah, He pray on the Prophet. Mean Allah, He bless the Prophet. <laughs> so and perform salat in the two end of the day. And some look at this guy. And in the some hours of the like, what the heck is that? And here they add like I E five salat. <laughs> It says two time and when the approach of the night, and now they added the five. Look, look what they do. I.e. the five compulsory. What the, where is the five? If it's to the end of the day and when the approach of the night. Change the translator. Who is this one? This is Hilali and Khan. Let us see the front one. Itani, Itani. Let us see Itani. How are you doing, Itani? <laughs> How is your grandma doing? Look at Itani. Okay. Perform the prayer at the borders of the borders what the borders of the day these have borders okay and during the approach of the night what the heck the previous guy he says the five prayer <laughs> so you see as you see like it's three prayer the two it is the uh, it says in arabic literally the two end of the day the two end of the day and the approach of the night that is three that's it. Change the translator. I mean, we can keep playing this game forever. This is Itani. Uh, let us see Biktal. Biktal. Biktal is smarter than his, you know, the rest of the boys. He's a big donkey. Establish worship in the two worship, not prayer, at the two end of the day, and some watches of. The <laughs> Let, let me go back to the hadith before I jump from the window. <laughs> I mean, jump to go back <laughs> to the video. Oh boy, presentation. The winds came to the prophet, peace and blessings be upon him. And they said, when is the hour? The prophet looked to the youngest of them and said, if this boy lives, he will not reach old age before your hour is established. Hisham said, by your hour, the prophet meant their death. So we see one version where it's saying your hour. Then I'm going to skip the middle one. Um, and then Anas reported that a person asked Allah's messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as to when the last hour would come. Uh, he had in his presence a young boy of the Ansar who called Muhammad Allah's messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, said, If this young boy lives, he may not. Anyone knows Arabic, he will dial up him when he says, <laughs> It's like somebody he have a, you know, his throat is stuck with zucchini or something, trying to say some word in Arabic, but he cannot say it. Okay, okay, I got, I got it. Yeah, you, 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 you are doing good. Uh, continue. Grow very old till the last hour. We see the last hour coming to you. So we see two different versions. How they are two different versions? You strip it. They ask him when the hour will come. When the hour. The, the hour. They did not say when our hour. Why Muhammad is the person who tell people when they die? Since when? And how this is a different version? This is his stupid translation. This is the translation he gave us. Let me put it in front of you. I'm trying to zoom in so you guys can read it better. I don't know if you guys have a good eyes or not. Do you eat carrot every day? <laughs> I eat a lot of carrot. <laughs> okay, so look, this is his stupid translation. It says, when the last hour will come. This is his stupid translation. A translation of his choice in his presentation. <laughs> so what is the question? When the last hour would come. They did not say when our hour, hour. The Quran is so clear saying that nobody knows the unseen save Allah. And the death of people is included. Their lifehood, 
when they die, when they... No, nobody knows, save Allah. Uh, and in the presence, there is a young boy. And Allah Messenger said, if this boy lives, and here I like it when Muhammad, he said, if. <laughs> Hold on. I mean, the whole prophecy destroyed. So if this boy lived, he will not approach the old age before the hour will come. If this boy, you see, in order to make a prophecy about when the hour will come, you should say, before he approached, that means he will live, not if he will live. He will live, but he will not pass the point of being old. You don't say if he will live. Like imagine you ask me, who is going to win the election? And now I'm going to predict, if he win, he win. What the heck? If this boy lives, he may, what, he may not. He may not. If he live, he may not. It's like driving in the highway in Cairo, you know. One says the same the same exit, it says entrance. Those things you always you see in the Middle East because you know they, they steal the sign. So entrance, don't exit, don't enter, enter, don't enter. In the same road, one way, two ways. So if he lives, he may not grow till the last hour come to you the last hour how this is different version what hour and now he said he will skip the one in the middle why you skip it he put between two bracket here this is the muslim translation not his translation he don't, the guy he did not even know two arabic words he you he would see you dying what <laughs> do you see the stupidity same time let me play a little bit of the video so we can laugh more for entertainment purpose but let me uh, let me move a little bit i mean this is boring do we have any Muslim would like to call us? Every linking means that he graded. For first, uh, ex excuse me, we are um, over very time? much. We are very much over ten minutes. Oh, to okay. do you want to conclude it quickly? Uh sure. Um, uh, sure. I'm just gonna leave this open, but these are the uh, principles of Matin criticism, and uh, I felt that if the hypothesis were accurate, we would see that um, did not mean the burden of proof like but I, I gave a thought experiment if it did and another layer but I'm I'm gonna skip that um so the conclusion is basically all the variants of the hadith do not support the meaning there are conflicting texts from the Quran there are there's no conflicting codex in the Quran you stupid idiot the Quran even Muhammad he says the moon is split asunder and none of those who they are talking to you they mention that Already Muhammad, he protected the hour in his time and he received that from Allah. So you are an idiot. When Allah, he says supposedly, Aka Muhammad, no one knows the hour save Allah. But Allah told Muhammad the Quran where he said to him, the hour, the, the moon is split and the hour is so nigh. Do you see it? So Muhammad, he predicted already, Allah told him that the hour is almost there. This is the Quran. In Arabic, it says, 
anyone can go and check in the dictionary what اقتربت mean it's so close so Muhammad already predicted the judgment day to come this is why we see in many other hadith not only in those hadith Muhammad as an example he woke up and he saw uh, he's like nightmare he saw a vision from Allah you know Allah he give visions vision and chickens and virgins so he woke up from uh, uh, from his visions and he said today uh, Gog and Magog they open such a hole a we to the Arab to who to the Arab read it the prophet uh, Sarsour said a we to the Arab because evil has drawn near okay what evil he's talking about what what is the evil is coming to the Arab Muhammad is not saying to the Pakistani Persian no 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 to the Arab he's speaking about Gog and Magog the Prophet came to visit me one day frightened he was so scared La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, we to the Arab, because of an evil has drawn near today, an opening of this size has been made in the barrier restraining Ya'gug, Gug, Gug. And he made a circle in his hand. And Gog and Magog is the sign of the Day of Judgment. So a we to the Arab, this is not about 3,000 years later. The guy is terrified. The guy is totally terrified. So the Muhammadan, in order to cover up the false prophecy of Muhammad, which Muhammad, he said in the Quran already in the chapter of the moon, that the moon split asunder. And this is a sign of the day of judgment. This is what the Quran is saying, not me. The moon splitting is not a miracle. It is a judgment day sign. Read it. And you will notice here again the Quran using the same words in the hadith, the hour. So the second you say the word the hour in Islamic mythology, fictions, you mention and you mean only the day of judgment. Not my hour and your hour. Nobody care for the hour of people. Who, who will die people die and live every day so the Quran says and Muhammad now knew when the hour will come because the Quran told him the sign of the day of judgment already established I did not watch the whole so-called debate between David Wood and this guy and the Apostle Prophet but I don't think they mentioned that to him if they do if somebody watch it let me know And not only that, Muhammad, he predicted many things. As an example, Muhammad, he claimed that the Antichrist is already exist in his time. And the Antichrist appearance will happen in the Day of Judgment. If you remember, we mentioned the story of al Jassasa. Do you remember? We made the whole, you know, video about it. The Antichrist, 
which is in Islamic mythology called al Masihu al-Dajjal, which means the liar messiah, the messiah, the liar, which means he is a fake messiah. And we will not show something is weak. We will show what is sahih. In the time of Muhammad, Muhammad, he claimed that the Antichrist is already there. But the Antichrist is a sign of the end of the time. But he was there in the time of Muhammad. Do you see it? The Shia now are not believing in Jassasa. No, the Shia, they believe in Jassasa. They have more of a funny story. Shia, they have, uh, you know, if the Muslim, they have 1,000 uh, 1, funny stories. The Shia, they have a billion stories. Don't remind me. Don't remind me with the angel but uh, Futros. I mean, when you hear the Shia Sheikh speaking about Futros, I die laughing. I, I Once I could not even... Hardly I can breathe, like for especially when the the the, the you know the Iraqi or the the Persian Shia they speak in Arabic. Malak Fatros, قد ألقاه الله في جزيرة وعاقبه وكسر جناحيه لأنه خالف أمر الله. فقال له الله. أي عقاب سوف أعاقبك أفي يوم الساعة أو غير يوم الساعة فقال فطروس يا الله عاقبني الآن فأرسله الله إلى جزيرة Translation So فطروس This is a story of the Shia You know The Shia they have You would, you would literally You would die laughing if you speak the language, you really would love it. So, and you know, the Shia, they are like, will be like when they are listening to their stories, they will go so crazy for it. And so, there's an angel, his name is Futros. I like Futros. Futros, Futrosin, Futrosuya, you know, Futros, whatever. So, angel, his name is Futros. He broke the command of Allah, brother. So, Allah told Futros, What do you want me to do for you? Punish you in the hour of the day of judgment or now? The angel, he said, please Allah, they will punish me now. Not the hour, it's going to be hard. So Allah, he decided to send him to an island, which is Hawaii. And he broke his wings so he can fly. And he stay in the island. And then one day, the angel Futros, who is in the island. <laughs> Don't sleep, by the way, okay? <laughs> So the angel Futros actually actually there's a hold on hold on there is there is a video about it but I cannot play it for you you know you know they will flag me the <laughs> Malak Futros what the? yeah so anyway this angel Futros who was in the island look 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 how many videos about it Futros. Huh? So let me use Google Translation. Translate uh, this. I cannot translate here. I have to use Google. Anyway, so here you will see uh, the story of the angel Futros. Uh, Allah, he punished him. He broke his wings and he put him in an island so he cannot fly. This is the punishment. It's like a jail, an island. You know, you cannot go anywhere. So Futros, he was in the island, and then one day he heard a lot of noise in the sky. You know, thousands of angels are flying, like the bees, you know. So he looked up, and he said, uh, Okay, uh, uh, hey, what is this? What's happening? Uh, somebody, uh, is that the judgment day? The, uh, an angel, in answer to him, Jibreel, he said, No, Futros. It's not the day of judgment. Today the prophet, he have a grandson. And Allah, he sent the angels so they can salute him. And I'm just talking like the speak in the video. 
So Putros, now he's so upset. He said, please, please ask Allah to fix my wings. I want to go with you. I cannot wait. Are you sure that the prophet have a grandson and his name is Al Hussein? <laughs> Shia. Shia stories. All of those is about Futros. Look, all of those stories about Mr. Futros. So Sunni, Shia, you know, it's same stupid donkey story. All what is required is to be a donkey and not to use your brain. Literally. If you use your brain, that will not work. Like I, I, I use Google Translation so I can show you. Story of the angel Futros, translation of Google, make it a king, but it's not a king. Futros, uh, did the angel Futros dis disobey the Lord? How can not disobey his Lord? The story of angel Futros and the cradle of Al Hussein, brother. Look, what the heck? <laughs> Futros. <laughs> Oh boy. <clears throat> when we say stupidity is amazing, I have I have a million reasons to say it. <laughs> yeah, when you decide to be a donkey, everything is possible. Uh so anyway, now like you know, uh, supposedly uh I think it's the turn for I don't know, uh apostate prophet to answer him. Uh, you want me to guys to play the rest of this thing or you, uh, enough is enough? What do you want? I don't let me know. Let us vote. No, not Futros. Futros, Futros. I mean, even the names, you don't know where those names came from. Futros. Do we have any Muhammadan? So Muhammad, he predicted, he claimed that the Antichrist is alive in his time and he is coming and he was asking if the uh, lake of Tabaraya dry because simply Gog and Magog will walk by. Uh, the story in front of you. So predicting the judgment day, not only in those hadith about this kid will not grow old, it's all over the Quran and all over the hadith. The story of a Jassasa alone is a horrible, stu stupid story. The Antichrist is exist in the time of Muhammad. In the time of Muhammad. But isn't it Muhammad, he says the Antichrist will not, uh, the sign of the, uh, the judgment day is the Antichrist appearing? Here we go, he appeared. People saw him. And Muhammad approved the story. And as you see, this is correct. Sahih. Let us open our Skype. My Skype is not open yet. Because we wanted to play the video first. <sighs> All right. You know, there is uh, somebody trying to, uh, to talk to me in private. And I say, you can call me only live. And now I receive this. I'm not going to show the name, just to show you how, how people are so stupid. Is it because I'm Indonesian you don't want to uh, talk to me? Whoa, 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 whoa. What the heck? <laughs> Now I have to block you, sorry. Is it because I'm Indonesian? You don't want to talk to me because only you accept Middle Eastern and Western to call you? But this is the same stupid person called me live before. I don't want to take to talk to anyone in private. You want to call me, you call me on live, especially if you are a female. And now I have to block you. Don't bring your drama on you and me. Here we go. You're blocked. Period. 
stupid people. You send me first time, you want to talk to me. Second time, third time, fourth time, and I told you no, no, no. And now what? Because I'm Indonesian. <laughs> the race card. <laughs> ah, stupidity is amazing. Oh boy, okay. Uh, I don't see any Mohammedan text me in Skype, all right, no problem, but my Skype is open. Listen carefully. I'm not the one you can play games with and you make him feel guilty. I don't care what you think. I don't care. You make your drama and your stupidity. It doesn't count for me. I say no, it's mean no. You repeat again, I'm being kind. I'd not block you. I said, why you want to talk to me? What for? You have to give me a reason. Anyway. Do we have any Mohammedan? Anyone? So Muhammad, as you see, he predicted the hour all over the, the Hadith, all over the Quran. He claimed it's very close. Even the Antichrist appeared in his time. If you go right now and write in the hadith, the Antichrist or a Dajjal, what you will find, all of the stories of the Dajjal is about the hour. And Muhammad actually, he make a very funny statement. The Prophet says a Dajjal will come to Medina and will find angels guarding it. <laughs> My friend Muhammad, if the angels are not guarding it, it's Joe Biden and the Awaks, in case you do not know. I'm patriot. Uh, and this hadith here is more stupid, but uh, not important for us. Look at this. Look, look. The messenger of Allah, he said, the Antichrist, the, the false messiah, he will be fought by 70,000 Jews from Asfahan, from where in Iran? Okay, hold on. How many Jews there is in Iran? In all of Iran, not only Asfahan. Hmm. Let us see. The total of Jews in Iran is 8,000. Hold on, to be accurate. Yeah, 8,000 people. Eight thousand three hundred. According to Muhammad, seventy thousand from the city of Asfahan alone. Asfahan. Let us continue. And another fake prophecy of Muhammad. He claimed that. Uh, uh, you know the plague will not enter the city of Medina and uh, later we find that the city of Medina was heavily invested like uh, 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 people dying heavily from this uh, uh, from this disease let me see if I can find the, the hadith And right away, actually, this is after Muhammad's death, right away, the plague attacked the city of Medina. And Muhammad, he claimed that plague will never enter that city. Do you see it? This is very authentic Al-Bukhari. Once I went to Medina, where there was outbreak of disease, the plague, and the people were dying rapidly. 
I was sitting with Omar. This is Muhammad. He just, he just, you know. But Muhammad, he promised that Medina is protected by the angels and no such a disease can enter the city. Do you see it? But people were collapsing and dying by hundreds, funeral after funeral after funeral. And by the way, there's a stupid guy, his name is James White. And James White, he said in his video, uh, uh, like, uh, you know, the, the Muslims were saved from the plague, you stupid idiot donkey. Nobody spoke about their plague because they are not even exist in history. Those are Bedouin. Those, this is not Europe, the land of civilization, where there's historian writing everything, who die, who live. They are, those are Arab Bedouins. But as you see, people dying by thousands, actually until now, the population of Arabia is nothing. After all those years. But this idiot, James White, James Muhammad White, He's an idiot. Do we have any Muhammadan? Do we have any Muslim Indonesian? I talk only, I don't talk to Indonesian. This is the conclusion. <laughs> Half of my admins are Indonesian. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. And now I feel guilty, by the way. Is that why you don't want to talk to me? Because I'm Indonesian? You sound like Aridawa. Do we have any Mohammedan? Any brave Mohammedan? As you see, all the prophecies Muhammad he claimed, they are stupid. All of them. Any orange, orange, Indonesian Ustad want to talk to me? Anyone? So is it true what he said that in Medina is protected from diseases and the plague will not enter it? Is that true? I mean, the, uh, the, the piss of Muhammad is still not dry in the world. Remember, Muhammad, he used to piss in the street. And this is a very clear sign that he's a prophet of Allah. I mean, only Prophet of Allah, they unzip, they grab their penis, and they piss in the road. There's a hadith about a guy, he was walking by, and he said, uh, and Muhammad was pissing. And then I said to him, Assalamu alaikum. And the Muslim, they made an article and studies about it, about the, 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 the polite of Islam. The polite. What is the polite of Islam? Don't say Assalamu alaikum for somebody is pissing on the wall in the street. Instead of saying, Oh, what kind of a prophet he grabbed his penis in the road and pissing in the road they are saying you should not this is the this is the topic now you should not say assalamu alaikum brother with him breath but of all prophet muhammad he pits anywhere because he have a license he is like a you know go to bangladesh they piss in the street everywhere too exactly because we put it in the prophet muhammad what the heck I mean, what kind of a prophet he go in the street and zips? Can't you control yourself? There's women, there's children walking by. So the guy walking by said, Assalamu alaikum, Muhammad. The Muslim, they made studies about it. Why the prophet did not answer? In fact, the guy is not saying, Assalamu alaikum. The guy is saying, hey, Muhammad, Assalamu alaikum, which means we saw you, what you are doing, man. And this is why Muhammad did not answer, because obviously, the guy is making fun of him. What kind of a man he piss in the road? Go to your house. The whole, uh, uh, you know, this Med uh, Medina or Mecca, I mean, they are small, tiny. Few, uh, you know, it's not like you want to take the bus to go to your home. Do we have any Mohammedan? Hello? Let us go back to the video, uh, you know, just for entertainment purpose. You like entertainment purpose? Let us do entertainment purpose. Let us see what uh, uh, what uh, uh, apostate prophet will say to this uh, 
Sheik. He's a sheik. Conflicting text from more authoritative hadith. There are other prophecies of Muhammad that go past the hundred year mark. And, uh, you know, there are other possible meanings within the rules of the language at the time that it was spoken. And I guess that's uh, it. Um, you can uh, undo it now if you'd like. All right. All right. Well, thank you. Um, thank you. Although we, we might want to bring that back up. Uh, no, not, not, not necessarily the second, but I might have a, I might have a point or two to make based on uh, one of the earlier slides. Okay. We can always get back to it whenever you need it. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, um, but I made, I made quite a few notes here and I have also prepared a few things in advance uh, before we went into, oh into the, before we uh, started the stream. I'm sure David also has a lot of uh, things to say. I only, uh, have a couple, I only have a couple thoughts on it. Okay. Uh, so um, here, here is the issue. I just have um, some problems, one major problem. Uh, with the presentation and with your objections. Now, so you, uh, you have brought up several points, including one that you uh, emphasized quite a bit, which is that um, even if we were to assume that uh, that Muhammad only said the world would end within 100 years and there was nothing conflicting, um, no other conflicting narration, or if Muhammad said uh, the hour will come before this boy grows very old and there was no other conflicting narration, um, we would still have to look at, I don't know, uh, Quran verses, for example, which say that he may not know the hour or know what nobody knows the hour, or we could still look at uh, certain narrations where he says every hundred years Allah sends a renewer and so on. Here is the problem. In my opinion, uh, in your worldview and in the worldview, in the world of somebody who believes in Islam and who believes in the Quran, who believes in the truthfulness of Muhammad, it is simply impossible for Muhammad to contradict himself. It is impossible for Allah to contradict himself. And it is not possible uh, when making such truth statements for Allah and Muhammad to contradict each other. Therefore, if you find Muhammad make a, making a statement which contradicts with another statement that he made or which contradicts with Allah or the Quran, then you take that as a clear contradiction and prove that the narration is invalid. But that is only true because you believe that Islam is true. It's only true because you believe that Muhammad was a truthful prophet. For somebody who is not a Muslim, for somebody who does not believe in the infallibility of uh, Islam and Allah and Muhammad's prophethood, um, that is not really a solid argument. I, I will never doubt the possibility and, in fact, the idea that Muhammad contradicted himself quite a few times and that he was also at points, at times, in contradiction with the Quran. I might accept that he did say, I do not know at all when the hour will come, which I don't think he said, and I think that's a worthy thing to go into, while also claiming at another point that the hour will come within 100 years. That I think is entirely possible. For you, it is not possible because you think he cannot contradict himself, but for me, it's possible because he's just a mere human being, and he can, throughout his prophethood, for different reasons, out of, uh, you know, for, for an ulterior motive or unintentionally change his mind and contradict himself. Um, David, it looks like you wanted to say something. Huh? Oh, yeah, I, I just wanted to because I was I was thinking something similar um, in the sense that you have sort of a there, there's there's an insider's perspective and an outsider's perspective, and this is true. This is true of this is true of everything, right? So in, in Christianity, in Christianity, if someone's criticizing Christianity, I'm thinking of it from the perspective of a Christian, where I'm trying to make sense yeah. of it. Whereas the the other person who doesn't believe in Christianity doesn't have to think about it to, in 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 a way where he's trying to make sense of it. He can just think it's a it's a it's a mess. And so when we're talking about um when we're talking about something like uh, Muhammad's prophecies. Um, or various things Muhammad said, uh, I think AP and I are on the same page that we're not going to this expecting consistency, thinking, oh, if he said this here and that conflicts with that over here, then we either need to reconcile them or reject one of them. We could be thinking, well, he, he may have said completely different things at different times. Um, 
because we don't we don't actually believe that he's getting this stuff from God. Whereas as a Muslim, you're not thinking exactly. that you're you're not thinking it of it. Uh, uh, um, you're not thinking of it uh, from a a critical perspective in the sense that you're you know you're you're raising this as an objection. Uh, you know, for, for obvious reasons, you're thinking of this from a Muslim perspective where you think you, you believe that Muhammad's a prophet. And so you're trying to, you're, you're, you're trying to reconcile those things. And so, but it, for everyone who's watching that, that distinction is important to keep in mind, whatever the perspective that's on the table is, you, you have this, this insider's perspective and this, this outsider's perspective. So guys, the perspective, which is the different perspective, and you know, if you, if you have this perspective, and I, I don't have different, the same perspective. So if we don't have the same perspective, we don't have exactly the same uh, perspective. So you have your perspective, and I have my perspective, and uh, uh, so the perspective is uh, the what, what? What is the debate? We do perspective is perspective, and the Abdul who keep writing in the chat saying one plus one plus one. Equal to one, ha ha ha! You stupid idiot! Isn't it your stupid God, Allah? He says that the Christian they say that the Messiah is Allah. So where is the one plus one plus one? Look like your God, Allah. Mathematics is wrong. You you must be like Zakir Naik. Put it in We cannot teach Christianity in the school because the Christian they teach the one plus one plus one is equal to one. <laughs> they have wrong mathematics, donkey. Is it your stupid prophet in the Quran says the Christians they say the Christian they say the Messiah is Allah? So if the Messiah is Allah, who is the second person? Who is the third person? I'm waiting for you. You can call your daddy or your nanny. It's the same. Because your dad is washing dishes and your mom she have a mustache because the Prophet Muhammad he forbid her from taking hair from her face. Prove me wrong. <laughs> so anyway, your perspective, my perspective, what is the debate? Well, are we going to spend the night talking about your perspective and my perspective? Get the guy busted and that's it. Your perspective and my perspective. And you to have your perspective, but I don't have the same perspective. So uh, you have, your, this remind me of the chapter of Al-Kafirun. You know, the chapter of the Hummus. Oh, you this kuffar. I don't believe I believe not in what you believe and you will not believe in what you believe because I will not believe in what you believe and I wouldn't believe in what you believe and you will never you will never believe what you believe because I will not believe in what you believe and you will never ever do believe in what I believe. I have my belief, you have yours. What the heck? The chapter of a perspective. Okay. Perspective. Why it's why it's relevant here is um uh, we, we may we may listen to Sheikh Farouz's responses and think, well, and they are calling him Sheikh too, man. like he's a Sheikh, you know, he have a beard. <laughs> Doesn't convince us that this is you know the correct solution to this. Uh, we may still think it's a we may still think it's a problem, but from a Muslim perspective, Muslims are probably looking saying, hey, if, if there's a plausible, if there's any, even you know what, I'm going to take this word from the dictionary. I have the dictionary in the shelf. Let me look for it. Perspective. I'm going to delete it. How many times you have to repeat the same? Like finish it. Okay, from his perspective. A plausible response to this. I'm going to accept a plausible response to this rather than just you know rejecting Islam or something like that. Uh, so anyway, yeah, I, I was I was uh, we were we were thinking along the same lines there. I think, but uh, yeah, what, pretty much. What do you say first? So I, actually, what um, I'll just do yep. one at a time. Actually, what both of you said, I think, is uh, consistent and accurate. Um, though one of the things that uh, David said about the outsider perspective, it actually um, may um, let me think of a presentation I did, um, as well as um, a that's like I made a slide of that for tomorrow's discussion. But um, I, I did a um, I did a okay. So David Wood, he stuck with the word perspective. This guy, he stuck with the word um. Um, 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 I mean, this is the most boring, funny conversation. Shake um, how are you, Shake um? Hmm. Islam is the truth. We don't have time for a stupid comment, you know. Call me and let us see your God, the Musketeer, the three Musketeers, Allah, Muhammad, Zibreel. It's you, Muslim, who practice the Trinity. Get lost. Or be a man and call me in Skype. Let everybody see how good you are. 
Prophet Muhammad, Prophet Ham. Zibril and Allah, three. Can Islam be established without any, any of them? No. It's you Muslim believe in Trinity. Same time, call me right now and I will show you that Allah is a three. In the same time, he is one and from your prophet. Do you there? I will make you read it. I will make you explain it and then I will give you a five finger spank. Call me potato, muta boy. Uh, you know, the Mohammedan, they try to avoid uh, or change the topic always. So what they have, uh, we have one God and you, they believe in three gods. Ha 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 ha. Stupid idiot. Let us say somebody believe in a million God, but they are real, better than your stupid God who don't who think the sun set in murky water. In India, they would uh, they have a temple have a temple of elephants. Some they think he's God, but elephant is real. Allah is not. <laughs> so, elephant is more acceptable to the truth or close to the truth from Allah. Prove to us that Allah exists. The God who said that the sperm of the woman coming from ribs, but women don't have a sperm. Unless this is the family of Joe Biden. You know, when I saw this uh, so-called debate, I always I find I find that the one they bring to the debate, they are hilarious, stupid. And there is no real argument, you know, I mean, and I saw the comment in the chat. I love this debate. Very respectful. Uh, this is why it's boring. There's no real fight. I mean, have you ever heard of two people fighting and they are respectful to each other? <laughs> I mean, the guy there, the Muslim, he called us kuffar. Najis, which means filthy. Animal. Monkeys. Pigs. And then there is respectful debate. I don't understand how it's work. Who respect who exactly? So he believe you are filthy. He believe you are an animal. You, he believe that you are a cattle. He believe you should be killed. He believe that you should not go to Mecca because you are filthy. And then you say there is respectful the you know debate. Hmm. Anything is respectful is not a debate because a debate should be real. You see, once I was uh, talking to uh, a lady and her husband. And uh, they are Jehovah's Witnesses. And then, you know, the woman, she said, please, I respect your belief. I said, I don't respect yours. You should see how they look at me, you know. Why, why, why people like to be hypocrite? What do you mean respect me, respect your belief? What the heck is that? Do you respect wrong? Do you respect believe in the devil? Do you respect somebody will, somebody faith, not the person, who will go and leading, misleading people to hell? What respect? Here we do true, real, argument and debate so if you are a person who is confident about his religion if you have one and you are shia or muslim sunni or any islamic sect which is too many you know the funny is even the muhammadan they come to the christian and they say which christian sect is the correct one huh so i can join christianity but according to muhammad the most divided religion is islam Muhammad said that only one of them will go to heaven the rest are going to go to hell and they are the minority read it so the Quran is so clear but then we have 72 sect only one will go 73 sect sorry only one will go to heaven. Is that because the Quran is so clear or because the Quran is so stupid? That is my perspective. <laughs> Any Muhammadan? Uh, here we go. 
The Jews split into 71 sect and my nation will split into 73 sect. Any Muhammadan? Every single argument they have against us is a stupid, it's invalid, it is a lie, it's a fabrication. Starting from we believe in three gods. Because even the stupid Quran say the Christian don't believe in three gods. Even your stupid book. So why you lie about us against your Quran? Why you are stupid? And if God cannot be one and the three in the same time, that means God cannot be God. Because nothing is impossible for God. Me, maybe I cannot be one and four. One and five in the same time, one and one thousand, but God, He can, He's God. So, if you are trying to match God with your stupid mathematics, that means you don't believe in God, you are putting God under the term of nature. Like, can God live forever? If you want to put Him under the term of nature, then why you say He's alive forever? You see the hypocrisy of the Muhammadan? And as long you are saying to me that God, he cannot be three and one, that's mean you decide what God can be, what he cannot. And this is explained to us in the stupid Quran. As an example, can Allah have a son? The answer, no. Why he cannot have a son? Allah explained. He says, well, he cannot have a son because he don't have a girlfriend. So, the logic Allah he gave to us is a logic of a man, not God. Because if he's truly God, shouldn't Allah remember that Mary, she have a son, yet she don't have a boyfriend? So the God of the Islam, he cannot have a son unless he have a girlfriend. In Arabic, it says sahiba, not a concert. Sahiba, which means a girlfriend, not a wife. This verse actually is enough to us to prove that the one who wrote the Quran did not know what God means. Because you just told me that your God explained to us why he cannot have a son because he don't have a girlfriend. As if we Christians believe that our God have a girlfriend, her name is Mary, and they have a baby Jesus. <laughs> but this is not what we believe. This is why even in the stupid Quran, Mary is a virgin. She don't have a husband. So when Allah himself, he used such a refutation, that they prove to us that Allah is really da'wah. Brothers and sisters, Allah, he cannot have a son because simply he don't have a girlfriend. How in the world he can have a son if he don't have a girlfriend? Have you ever seen somebody he can have a son without a girlfriend? Did you ever see somebody like that? Well, Allah, he cannot because Allah is like everybody. Christian Prince. First of all, this is not the voice of a brother Ali Dawa. Like, what the heck? What, Jack and Ike, how you jump in the conversation? How you know it's not him? He sounds like a girl. Christian Prince, first of all, how you can make my voice and you make it voice at the same time? It's very simple. You know, when I make my voice, I close my nose. When I uh, make your voice, I hold my <clears throat> tongue. <laughs> Any Mohammedan? What kind of God he cannot have a son unless he have a girlfriend? Hello? I want to know why Allah cannot have a son unless he have a girlfriend. That means Allah, he cannot have everything without a partner. So Allah is saying he cannot do things unless he have a partner. It's in the front of you. He need a partner to accomplish having a child. Did I say that or the Quran says that? 
Who is the one who used to the word, how can he? Is that me? Which means Allah cannot be God because if Allah question his ability, then Allah is not God. Do we have any Muhammadan? Guys, don't send me a text in Skype unless, you know, I mean, why, why people send me text in Skype? I say Muslim, Christian text me. I say Christian, Muslim text me. You remind me of Hamas. When they were shooting with the Israeli army, the Israeli they were saying, Ahmad, Ahmad, he stand up. They shoot him. Muhammad, Muhammad stand up, they shoot him. So the leader of Hamas, he said, you stupid, don't do that. Next time when they say Ahmad, Muhammad should stand up, not Ahmad. Let us fool them. So why you are texting me in Skype? Did I say Christian can call? I have my Skype open now for Muslims only. If I say Christian can call me, then you can call me. And you can call me only live on air. No private conversation, unless you're a Muslim. Do we have any Muhammadan? Mayday, mayday. Anyone? Okay, forget about anyone. I think to ask for one Muslim is too much. Okay, any half one. I mean, why those, I mean, why our apostate prophet and David Wood Muslim, they come to them one after one. And nobody is coming to me. This is not fair. Any Muhammadan is brave enough to call us? Anyone? Hello? You know, call me once, you will never call me again because you will leave Islam. Hajj Saab? Okay, Hajj Saab, he is a pure Muslim. You know what, Hajj Saab? I was really worried that you might be a mix. Like half Hindu, 30% Buddha, he is a pure Muslim. What does that mean? You drink camel urine 100% a day? No water? Can you please call me and explain to me what does that mean? I am pure Muslim. Hello? You got my attention. He is a pure Muslim. Okay. A pure Muslim is the one who takes shower with dead dogs and women of blood from period and garbage. Is that true? They don't take me seriously? Trust me, they don't call because they take me seriously. Like Mimi Hijab, he don't dare to talk to me. He hang up on me because he was so terrified. He was afraid that I would ask question. <laughs> this is what happened. He have five six muslim next to him and they put the speaker in the other side of the room so nobody can hear me and he was terrified and he did not let me say anything did you say that hang up on him cowards potato this is muhammad he is a pure muslim he take a shower in a pure way and he claimed that the water is so pure nothing make it impure See, my friend, you remind me your name. Fit. Read it. Man. Water is always pure, and your name, and you are saying you are a pure Muslim. Makes sense. A lot of sense. Hmm. First of all, according to scientific study, this is absolutely true. If you put 
seven kilograms of dead dogs and seven kilograms of dead garbage and seven kilograms of rats and mice and seven kilograms of women rags from blood and mix them all together and make a smoothie and put it in the jacuzzi water will stay pure and nothing make it impure this is all is proven to be scientifically accurate in the laboratory of islam I am in a school I cannot call you right now. My friend, I'm sure that you are in an Islamic school to the point you can join a chat. <laughs> I mean, no wonder the Islamic schools give certificate to everybody, including Zakir Naik. What the heck? You are in school and you are in my chat now? Man. What they are teaching you, the boring Quran, so you decide to join my chat? Be honest with me. <laughs> they are teaching you Quran, aren't they? So you decide. <laughs> I said to yourself, let me go to the chat. I don't want to hear the stupid Quran. Let me let me go and hear a Christian prince. He's more funny than the Quran. <laughs> I am in school. Can I talk to you? Okay. Otherwise, I would destroy you. Please don't. I am out of a glue. Uh -uh. Yeah, yeah, sure, they roasted me, yeah. Especially when he said, later he make a video, he said, the Christian prince is a sexual predator. Why? Because I state to Muslim women who insulted Jesus. <laughs> she said, Jesus, he played with his mother boobs. <laughs> so I said to her, I said, in fact, it's your prophet who said, suck on me. So the coward, he cut it. And he said, the one who said that is a sexual predator. But this is your friend, Mimi Hijab, is going around and asking a Muslim sheikh, wife to suckle him he roasted you potato 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 now who is a brave muslim don't waste my time with a stupid statement you muslims always win have you ever heard of a muslim lose i mean in the war 57 48 56 it's a every time they go in war with israel they win they lost Jerusalem, they won. They lost the east of, they won. They lost half of Jordan, they won. The Israeli army is almost in Damascus, they won. They won all the time. It's a fact, it's a fact. Do we have any Mohammedan? Who is a brave Mohammedan? He wanna win, he wanna, he wanna make me lose like Israel. Anyone? So I can't take Jerusalem. And not only that, by the way, they have a celebration day for it. <laughs> have you ever heard the only one who celebrate their <laughs> their dark dark days? <laughs> I mean, they they just lost Jerusalem and they claim they won. Any Mohammedan? And not only that, now they are kissing the ass of the Jews to protect them from Iran. Ah, I forgot Nimi Hijab. He did striptease in the front of the Chinese embassy. I guess what? Saudi Arabia and Iran, both Muslim countries, they were kissing the ass of the Chinese to fix the problem between them. Oh boy. The communist. Do we have any Mohammedan? Uh, Islam is winning, taking over the world. Yeah, Batata. Okay, Mr. Batata. I don't know. Uh, you just gave me a great example of how Islam is winning. Yeah, Batata. <laughs> is it your prophet? He said, Islam will shrink and become like so small to the point like a, like a snake going inside its hole. So are you saying to me, your prophet is a liar? Actually, your prophet, he predicted that the Italian, they will be the majority of mankind. <laughs> yeah, Batata. <laughs> Let us go to the Hadith. <laughs> Brother, are you sure that the, 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 the Italian, they will be the majority of mankind, brother? Yes, brother. Yes, brother. Absolutely. Here we go. 
Man, okay, where is the hadith? Where is the hadith? Uh, where is the hadith? Uh, man, 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 man. Where is where is the hadith? Okay. Uh, I didn't show it to you. How many millions they live in Italy? And if you, in the Muslim, they try to fix it, they say, oh no, the prophet, he meant that the Christians, he meant by the Roman, he meant the Christians. That means your statement is stupid too. So how Islam is winning and your prophet, you protect the Christians will be the majority. Let me show you this version of the hadith. Read and love. One of the let us compare between what your prophet your prophet prophesying and what you just said in the chat. Not my words, your words, Muhammad words, your words, Muhammad words, your words. Muhammad words. <laughs> I heard Allah Messenger saying the last hour wouldn't come when the Roman become form the majority among the people. What the heck? Prophet of Allah, he said that? Yes, brother. Why you don't call me Batata? Let us see who is the Batata. Hmm? Do you see it? The Roman, they would be the majority among the whole world. It's not the Indonesian or Korean or China. No, the Italian. And the proof of that, pizza is the most popular food in the world. Great and breath. But of all, this is true. The most popular food in the world is the pizza. And that's what the property meant. He meant that the majority will become eating pizza. What was Zachary Nike? He says the Roman. What the pizza, man? I mean, pizza is a food. The Roman are people. Get him, friends. First of all, the Roman are people who eat pizza. To the prophet, he do not want you to eat pizza because it's very hard to eat today. So he said the Roman. Ah, so the prophet, he want to say that the majority of mankind, they will be eating pizza. Exactly. Are you there, Batata? Or we get you busted with no mercy? And that's why you don't dare to call like your the rest of you. The majority of mankind, I heard that Italy is suffering from fertility. Nobody having kids. <laughs> Stupid idiot prophet. I mean, the prophet, he never said the prophecy is not true. All his prophecies are not true. Muhammad actually, he predicted that the Arab, they will conquer the Constantinia and the Turkish are the enemy of Islam and they are the people of Gog and Magog. What happened is the opposite. Any Abdul? Who wanna, who's Abdul would like to call me and get uh, unlimited pizza uh, in heaven? Okay, in heaven, I will give you unlimited visa. But I promise it's so cheap, isn't it? Unlimited penis in heaven. I mean, a prophet who promised unlimited penis, endless penis. You have to be in this stupid to believe in such a thing. Any Abdul? Exactly, Italy conquered, you know, like you know, conquered the world with pizza. They throw pizza everywhere. Actually, I heard that the Italian right now they are threatening Putin that they will throw three tons of pizzas in the top of his palace, and especially with pepperoni. So imagine you are Putin and you are like five foot tall. He is very short, and now they throw a lot, a lot of pepperoni, like missiles after missiles full of pepperoni. Paparoni, paparoni, jum, jum, jum. Paparoni, paparoni, jum, jum, jum. Prophet Muhammad says that this is true. It's happening. It's happening. The Roman, they are taking over the world. You know? Any Muhammadan? 
This is a prophet of God. I mean, this is a prophecy. <laughs> so don't worry, guys. Look like the judgment day will never happen because the judgment day will happen only when the majority of mankind is the Roman. So obviously, the judgment day will never happen. Look like Muhammad, he never heard of the Mexican. <laughs> like if you say the Mexican, I will believe you. If you say Brazilian, I will say maybe. If you, what, what the heck? The Roman? Are you sure? Oh, mommy. Do we have any brave Muhammadan? As you see, ladies and gentlemen, the Muhammadan, they are cowarding and they don't dare to call. And this Abdul, he stopped even texting. Uh, and by the way, I received messages saying, hey, Korea, CP, where are you? You know, oh, you guys, you're not sharing my videos. How many times? Yes, okay, I, okay, I don't really care for the number as number, not for me, but I care to see that you guys are doing your part. Why well, want to make a new video if nobody watched the previous video yet? 86,000 in this account, 100 something thousand in that account, and then the view is very low. I know that YouTube don't promote my channel, but I believe you too, you are not promoting it, you are not helping. You don't make comment, you don't give a like, you don't subscribe, you don't do anything. Lazy people. You cannot call me, my friend, unless you are a Muslim. When I say Christian can call, then you can call me. When I say only Muslims, that means only Muslims. Do we have any Muhammadan? Anyone? Welcome, my friend from Africa. We have people from around the world, and uh, we hope people from around the world they will learn and educate themselves. And as you see, you know it's very easy to destroy such a false man. We have endless fat, fat sources. The whole butcher house is open, and we butcher Muhammad every day. So, um, you know, when I when I was talking, you know, like teaching about Islam a long time ago, I don't have like access to anything in English. I use, I have to translate by myself. I have nothing. You know, you can't share those hadith in English, even though most of the translation is not accurate now. But at least now we can show you in English in their websites. But long time ago, when I started exposing this garbage cult, I have to translate every single word. Read in Arabic, translate. And then what the Muhammadan, they say he's lying, doesn't say that. And now we have their websites. Do we have any Muhammadan? Mayday, Mayday. Who wanna call me and receive promotion from Allah? As you know, the heaven of Allah is 100th floor. Brother, if you call me, Allah might move you from the better, from the lower floor to the highest floor. What do you think? Yeah, actually, once the, uh, the, they make a, uh, a report about Islamophobia and from all the channels in YouTube, the Iranian TV stations and I forgot what the other name, actually the video is in, in, in YouTube, they choose my video and you will notice in that video that I was recording the screen, not like now, I was recording the screen by video camera. This is how it was hard. I have to, you cannot go live, you know, not like now, like we go live, we talk to you, no. 
So I was recording the screen. I'm holding the camera on my hand. And you will see that the screen is not clear. There's lines, you know, the light of the camera, like, you know, from the screen. That's like the camera, like, you know, when the screen flip. Uh, so they choose my video to speak about what is Islamophobia. I mean, look, look who will talk about the phobia. This religion have a phobia from the hamster. Have you ever heard of a religion have a have a, a the enemy of Allah is a hamster? <laughs> Do you go live in TikTok? No, my friend. Well, I don't go to TikTok. TikTok is a stupid for me. It's too much garbage, and I will never install it in my phone. Uh, and actually, I encourage all of you not to have such a program. Very garbage. I installed it once. It was disgusting. I saw a kid. He have eyeliner, lipstick on his face, makeup, and the channel have like this. It's appear in front of me. I was like, you know, you flip the the channels. And I saw that kid. I could not believe it. Kid is not even nine years old. And all those who they are talking, I'm telling you, I'm sure they are adult. Pervert. So I decided to delete it right away. Uh, what I was going to search for? Uh, before we talk about the, the tech talk, stupid tech talk. Yeah. Anyway, I, I was going to search for the Iranian TV uh, station, but it's not important. But anyway, so the, the, this religion have a phobia from everything, from pork, from music, from Jews, from Christian, from the, from the cross, from the church, from the Bible, uh, uh, from the mice, from, uh, 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 you know, yet and the drink camera urine. Everything is dirty. But Kamal is halal. Hamster. The only religion who is worried about hamster if they are... Look, is it permissible to have a hamster at home? <laughs> Phobia. And the answer, no. Haram! This is the enemy of Allah. What about a dog? Haram! It's the enemy of Allah. What the heck? Okay, what? What about lizard? Haram! This is the guy who was trying the lizard. He was trying to burn Abraham. What the heck? And then they say Islamophobia. They accuse you of their phobia. And then we ask people when we have security for the airplane, is that the security because they have a phobia from Islam? <laughs> or this is real? <laughs> haram, halal, haram. Ruling, look, 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 look what they are busy with. I mean, look at the topic, brother. Ruling, ruling. You need ruling the Islamic, you know, all the garbage they have, you know, I mean, the Islamic country is destroyed. People piss in the street, garbage in the street, crimes, uh, 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 one night stand marriage, child marriage, all the garbage. And they are busy. Their sheikhs is busy to give you ruling about is hamster is halal. And look, this guy, he is not having a good view. 335 view after 10 months ago. 16,000. 1,003.3. Oh, look at this guy. Muslim hamster. Sorry, I could not. I have to block my microphone. I was coughing hardly from laughing. Oh boy. Do we have any Muhammadan? 
No Christian answer this, they say. What the answer this, what they say? They answer this, they say. How old was Yeshua when he began to regain? To regain? My friend, uh, when a Muslim he asks such a stupid question, the Quran says that Jesus, when he was in the cradle, he was the Almighty God wise. Don't you know the Quran says that the Messiah he spoke in the cradle? So when you answer a Muhammad and he's trying to make fun, you get him busted from the Quran. While Muhammad, he have to wait 40 years before he been squeezed by an angel. And even Muhammad at that moment, he did not even know what he is or what he want. The Messiah, when he was in the cradle, who is the angel who taught him his wisdom? He's just born. Do you see it? This is additional proof against the Muhammadan that while Muhammad needed 40 years to claim what he claimed, the Messiah in the cradle, according to the Quran, he spoke the word of God. And then we need to ask ourselves, how come the Messiah do not need Jibreel to teach him? Correct? How a child, he is just born, an infant. He is speaking wisdom, not only as a mature, Telling the adult rabbi, who is he? How come such a miracle never happened to Muhammad? The only way to answer this, that the Messiah must be the word of God himself, and the Quran confirmed that, that he is the word of God. So because he is the word of God, he do not need to be taught the word of god for he is the word and the word of god is god you understand he is the word of god in fact the stupid muhammad he copied the book of john chapter number one verse number one and verse number 14 and he put them together. So if you go in the stupid Quran, you will find how Muhammad he merged two verses from the Bible and he put them together in chapter 4, verse 171. So the Messiah is the Word of God, sent down to Mary. What was the Messiah? The Quran say. He was the word, the word. I remember the Muhammadan, they believe that the word of Allah is never created. So the Messiah never created. And he was in heaven before he came down to earth. And Jesus, he said, I am from above, you are from below. So the Messiah is the word of God. Send down to Mary and this word of God is a messenger at the same time he's a man so the word of god become a man a messenger and the word of god is accompanied by the spirit of god read it and his spirit proceeding from him from who from allah according to the quran so three and one in the same time according to the quran the muhammadan they say three and one is impossible but as you see the messiah is the man the word and the spirit of god Three in one. Chapter 4, verse 171. 
And the same verse saying, don't believe in Trinity. But the same verse giving us different form of Trinity. That a person, one person can be three and one at the same time. And this is how stupid the Quran is. Is Muhammad the word of Allah? No. This is why only the Messiah is in Islam called Kalimatullah, the word of Allah. Not only Kalimatullah, wa ruhahu, and his spirit. He is the word and he is the spirit. But how is a man and he is the word and his spirit? Any Muslim can explain to us? How he is a man and he is the word of Allah and he is the spirit in the same time. And why not the rest? Muslims cannot answer that. Muhammad is a stupid fool. He was trying to copy some of the Christian teaching, making it together so he can come with a new, let's say, phrase of Christianity. <clears throat> I'm uh, question CP uh, in Indonesia they said Muhammad is Noor Allah S A W T what is the scholar the truth well the Quran the Shia actually they go farther than saying that he is just a light the the Shia they believe that Muhammad and his family all of them they are made of light and they used to be stars in the forehead of Allah and how the Muslim Shia and the Sunni they come to this conclusion that Muhammad is Noor which means light the Quran says that Allah is the light but the Quran says that Muhammad same, same time is Siraj and Mudiyan and this is where the Muslims they come to this interpretation saying Muhammad is light and as one speaking of Muhammad he is a prophet truly we have sent thee as a witness and the barrier of a glad tiding and the warner and as one who invite to Allah by his leave and as a lamb spreading light so the Muhammadan, they take this verse into a different level and they say, especially the Shia, they say Muhammad and his family, not only him, all are made of light. They have a look of a human, shape of a human, but in reality, they are made of light. I hope I answered you. Do we have any Muhammadan? zero Muhammadan there to call us and to contact us what we can do so guys I'm not going to keep you longer as you see this debate is really funny and I don't find those debate our debate but I wanted to share with you how we waste our time making such a debate you see a debate should not be even have a topic you call me a person he go and he make a presentation and printing and put it in the screen this is not a debate People who knows, they do not need such a thing to read. You do not need to prepare for a debate if you are a person of knowledge. So you go and you search in the internet and you make a, you, you copy paste articles and then you make a slideshow and uh, where is the debate? Those are not debates and those people, they are not learning. And there's no need for 10 minute presentation for a person. Take my advice. If you want to have a real debate, have a normal human conversation. Normal human conversation. Not 10 minutes for you. This is not normal. It's not normal to make time for a conversation. Two people are talking. Do you talk? You know, look, when you are, uh, let us say you met somebody. And now you tell me it for you. Since when we do that? This is stupid. This is have nothing to do with debate. Your knowledge appear in a debate when 
unexpected question is given to you not when the question is given to you a month ago so imagine I say to you I'm going to have an exam for you and this is the questions a month from now I mean how stupid this exam is do you understand my point there is no exam A knowledge of a person will appear in the spot not by telling him a century ago what the topic is okay the topic is Islam call us prove to us Muhammad is a prophet that's it there's no need for this drama presentation and 10 minutes for you this those kind of debate actually is the only one Muslims they can survive because nobody is cornering anybody It's like two people they want to fight doing boxing match and then there's always a person between them. Always there is a person between them. So how the boxing will work? Like when Mimi Hijab, he said to David Wood, not a single Jew. Not a single Jew believe that God have a son. And the Quran says that the Jews believe Allah have a son. David Wood should take this potato and rip him apart in the moment. But because 10 minutes for you, 15 minutes, he forgot what he said. When everything he said, Allah has body part, who said so? Mimi Hijab answered, that's it, solve the problem, who said so? <laughs> and they laugh. Shouldn't you say right away, no 10 minutes, right away say to him, you stupid idiot son of Muta, your prophet says so, the Quran says so, the Sahih says so, Al-Bukhari says so, every single scumbag scholar in Islam says so. Instead what they do? 10 minutes for you, 10 minutes for me, and they make a mockery of the guy. Learn. Islam is religion of the mockery. If they cannot make mockery of you, they will not even debate you. They will not even get close to you. This is a satanic cult. So if you are not fit for a debate, then don't debate. Hit hard. And never be polite with the devil. Because when you are polite with the devil, that's mean you are not really making any point. The devil is still relaxed. You need to make the devil angry. And the only way to make the devil angry is when you step on his tail. If you don't see the devil angry, that's mean you did nothing. That's mean you said nothing. The devil is relaxing. And this is why those cowards don't dare to get close to me. In their channel, when I spoke to Mimi Hijab, what I said to him, I said, I was quoting your filthy prophet. I was quoting your filthy prophet. I did not say, I was quoting your prophet. I was quoting your filthy prophet. Filthy. Because this is how we can describe him. A man is ordering a woman to give her breast to an adult. Is that filthy or not? And then those filthy people, they go around and they make fun of their prophet statement, disrespecting him. They go in denial because it is disgusting and he is a stupid. The second you show them what is in their books, you step on the tail of the devil. 
Okay, can I suck your wife tit to make her haram? Mimi Hijab is making fun of his prophet words. In fact, this is Quran. And by the way, there's no Muslim can recite those verses for us. And yet they claim that the Quran is preserved. Then we have source says that the goat ate those verses. But then you ask yourself, if the Quran is preserved, the goat ate the memory of Muslims or only the book? What kind of a prophet he ordered women to give their tits as Mimi Hijab, he said. And the funny is, Mimi Hijab, the son of Muta, he make a video says a Christian prince is sexual predator because I was saying to a Muslim woman, quoting what her prophet says to her, suckle me. But he is saying the same words, look. He's going to a Muslim sheikh. This is a Muslim sheikh speaking to him. And the woman is married. And this is Twitter in the front of millions asking the man to let his wife give her tits to him making fun of his prophet why because the sheikh he says well this is what the prophet said so when hijab said okay as long as what the prophet said according to you let me suck her tits but yes this is what the prophet said the prophet of tits Prophet Muhammad wickedness upon him is wicked. This is only a statement of a wicked man. A decent man will never give such an order. And the funny is, the Muslim they say to you that this is like adoption. But if you ask them, if a woman she gave her breast to adult, is he forbidden from her? They will say no. So what the point then? What the point? Do we have any Mohammedan here? There to call us? Last call. So you can fulfill your goal and get the virgins who their private part fit for your penis, endless. Which must be true. Hmm? All right, so guys, I will I will be back as soon you guys make a good number viewing this video. And we said before, I mean, at least twenty thousand. So I feel like we know we are we, we we have people doing some work. So share the link, post comments about what we said, what you heard. The more you do, the more activity you can say can be happening. The more. People will view and YouTube even will recommend the channel. Don't do it for me. We want Muslim to see it. We want Christian to see it. They are trying to deceive your children. Their videos is all over the internet. And those who expose Islam, they are very few. And YouTube try always to suppress those people. So at least do something. For your case, not for mine. I don't have any. I'm the last one to worry about somebody converting me to the stupid cult of Muhammad. Do it for your sake, <clears throat> not for mine. So I want to say thank you for being here. I hope we have a good time today. And I will wait until we have like 20,000 maybe. And then by then we will come back live on air. And until then I say, May the Lord bless you. Islam get busted with no mercy as always. Christ is Lord. And if a fool like Muhammad can fool you, how foolish are you? See ya.